Ist ne? It's a deep box. It. So this is the moisture barrier that goes underneath, and you have to cut it. What's on your back? Okay, so you've seen a part of the bathroom demolition so far, and now we're going to be uh, removing the aft head and holding tank on our hull. Once those are removed, then we'll be able to take the fiberglass enclosure out and start putting down real floor. And basically, after the fiberglass is removed, the entire heads on that side will be out. This is one of the less fun aspects of working on the boat. It's kind of scary doing this because it's near our old through holes and old seat cocks and also if you do it wrong you're gonna get gross. I mean no matter what you're gonna get a little bit gross but you want to minimize the amount of grossness that is had. All right so let's what do we have here. This is our toilet, our head, and the holding tank. And once those are off, we will cut out this faux bulkhead right here and rip up all this fiberglass. And then we can put some temporary flooring in. So let's get to it. So far nothing bad has happened, but this is maybe not the best idea. And this hose doesn't want to come off gently, and I don't really want to force it because it's connected to an old seacock. So I'm going to heat the hose with a heat gun, and that should make it a lot more likely to come off smoothly. And we want to come off slow too, we don't want to like have it pop and have a lot of grossness come out. Yay! That was about as good as it could be. On each head on our boat, we have four, uh, three through holes and four seacocks. We have this one double seacock right here for the drains, the shower, and the sink. This one is the uh, inlet for the water, and this one is the uh, discharge for the toilet. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of old, a little bit corroded. Replacing the seacocks is on our to-do list, but it's kind of further down the to-do list. It's kind of a risk we're taking because we want to know, we want to wait till after our refit so we know exactly if we're going to keep all our seacocks or if we want to glass some over. In the meantime, we just kind of treat them like they're dynamite and stay away from them. That's why I'm really happy to get things unhooked from them to uh, have less things that will jerk or pull on them. A lot more space with that tank out. Time to tear out the toilet. It's recording? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, we're gonna show you, we've done the uh, tear out of all the, the heads and stuff that's in there. We turned the bed, so we'll show you this phase of what we got so far. Pretty much we've done most of the de demo stuff and we're gonna start the reconstruction aspect of it. This is where the heads and showers were, completely torn out. I put panels down underneath to cover up the bilges. Um, also had to put some ledges, lips for the wood to sit on. These panels were just wood that we took from the walls, so we've recycled. We will, uh, when we redo the floors in here, we'll put all nice floors on top of all the panels. If you come in and look forward, or aft rather, we, uh, Turn the bed. This is the bed being turned is permanent, but we're gonna build proper shelves underneath. Right now, we just have a temporary ledge that is holding up the bed, and we had to tear out a lip here. So this wasn't too hard, but now we have a nice uh, full-size bed, and it faces the proper orientation, so people don't have to crawl over each other to get into bed. If we turn around here, we will see that uh, we've cut the doorway for, so this area here is where the toilet's gonna be. Everything forward of here will be the bathroom with a sink and vanity here and then a standing shower forward. So yeah, we've opened it up and I'd say it's no longer a charter version, but it's not yet quite an owner's version. <laughs> 
After we tore the heads out, we found that the starboard side was actually sitting about an inch and a half higher out of the water than the port side, just basically due to all the stuff that we removed, all the heavy fiberglass, holding tanks, and toilets, and all that stuff, which is not a big deal because once we put everything back into the starboard side, it'll weight itself back down. Hi, Aria. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> All right, after a day of buffing and waxing, we have gotten the name on the boat, which is a pretty big milestone, Honu from Honolulu, Hawaii. Honu means sea turtle, and Honolulu, Hawaii is where Jessica and I have met, so it's kind of the best from both of us. She's a West Coast person, I'm kind of Texas and East Coast, so Honolulu, Hawaii, and before too, too long, hopefully we'll make it back there. Other than it being really cold, I'm quite pleased with how it's turning out. This is my dad, he did the buffing and half the work for the applying. Now we gotta go do inside stuff. Another project we chose to undertake was to replace all of the freshwater lines with new PEX lines and brass fittings for all the connectors. And the biggest problem was that all the plastic connectors had aged and were very, very brittle and were easy to break off without any without very much pressure at all. As you can see here, we have two broken fittings that happened in the course of trying to remove the old pipes. This is what this the the sixth time and uh three days that we've seven. been, to, yeah, seventh time in three days that we've been to a home improvement store of some sort to buy fittings for this water stuff. Death by a thousand cuts. But we're getting there, we're getting close. I think we just about have everything we need. Spoiled the dog. <laughs> Rabbit dog. What is it, Arya? It's over there now. Okay, we are unboxing our water tank. We're getting ready to take the dogs to the dog park. Put our, not water tank, holding tank. So exciting. The holding tank. <laughs> so this is the top. All right, what do we got? 35 gallon holding tank. Oh. Perfect. You can do that for both the top and the bottom. Feel like it's a lie to pretend like it doesn't get messy. So I dry fit and trim to fit all the pieces that we cut on land on the boat and put them into place and then we temporarily fasten them with screws in order to allow them to be fiberglass into place without worrying about moving them. Next we proceeded to clean up the salon area because that's where we're going to be applying our epoxy coats to our pieces of wood. We did it inside because it was too cold outside for the epoxy to do any curing. Oh, okay. Cut this. 
cuts. That didn't need to be cut. For both of us, this was our first time doing anything with epoxy, so we kind of went slow here at first while we were applying the first coats. But we followed the instructions and it went really well. Uh, voila. Round one is done. It's a bit of a mess, but it was all things considered successful. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve in working with this stuff on how like two people are going to work and how not to make the biggest mess possible. And we're trying to keep it, it's really cold outside. It's 34 degrees outside and 72 in here, which is fine for working in here. You don't really want to work with this stuff when it's cold because it just doesn't really, it'll work eventually, but it just moves really slow. It's not ideal. And now we're going to move on to the next phase. We've got all the marine ply coated with the first coat and we're getting ready to put glass on these two bulkhead pieces. And then we are going to coat the birch that's going to be the kind of half bulkhead for the. We wet out the glass, maybe a little slowly because it was our first time wetting out any glass. And then we failed to set the camera for the rest of the shots because we were kind of preoccupied with doing the epoxy and trying not to waste it or the fiberglass. On to the next project. So while that was curing, we tested out our dog net that we put on our transom to keep the dog from wandering oh, the docks. No. So I want to show how strong the current is here. Right now, we have uh, high high tides and low low tides because of the where the moon is, and that means that the currents are very strong when they're coming in and coming out. This is already a strong current place, anyways, and now it's really bad. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, we are in the Bahamas. The refit worked. We, was able to, we were able to make the boat functional and get where we needed to be. The next few videos are going to wrap up the refit up to this point and then show our journey from Charleston to here in the Bahamas. Right now we're in the Exumas. So stay tuned. Those videos are coming. Also, we have shirts for sale. Check out below. You can help support the channel that way if you're interested. Also, we have live tracking on our Patreon if you want, if you're curious. Can they message us? Probably? Yeah, and you can message us. Hmm. So. Good point. If you want more of an up-to-date real time, then follow us on Instagram. I try to post on there frequently now. <laughs> we have a lot of links for that down below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Doesn't even look that tropical-y. There, see that looks tropical. Blue waters. Bahamian sunsets. <laughs>